Not yet. Um, all right, we're live. Awesome. What's up, guys? Sean Bowen, Full Circle Investment Group and wholesalingoutofthebox.com back in for another lunchtime live. And as we are talking about buying lists to find motivated sellers, and this is going to be, a, I think, two or three part series um, to talk about how we do this and what we do, of course, based on there's other people out doing other things that they get different results from. So as this goes live, if you would, please uh, click the link that allows StreamYard to recognize who you are. And uh, we should be live on Virginia Wholesale Real Estate. And we should be live on our private group as well. Um, please let us know where you're coming in from. Let us know where you're seeing the, uh, the show. And uh, if you're watching this as a, re as a recording or a replay, um, give us some comments. and Let us know what you think. If this information is helpful, or maybe you've got something specifically on buying list and building list that you might want to share with the group that you're seeing success with. So buying list and building list, what, how, why, and where? And what we're talking about is the pros and cons of buying a list versus building. Okay. So that would be your, let's talk about the buying. When you're buying a list off of list source or, um, Man, there are so many different types of, so I can't even think about all of them, but we know that we've tried list source, we've listability, uh, we've gone into, uh, I think PropStream has got an ability to purchase in a list there. Um, the list that you're buying are going to be the easier way of getting a list. But again, that goes back to if it's easy for you, then it's easy for somebody else. And then you get into the a lot of fish in a small pond versus the big fish and a smaller pond, right? The idea here is, is that you are able to touch people that are not being targeted as much because it's just the vanilla Joe blog statement, right? So a lot of people, when they first get into this are talking about absentee owner as a list to go after. And then a lot of people are talking about pre foreclosure. So here are our experiences and these are my thoughts um, for why we did not do well with those. Um, and th some of the real pushback that we got was absentee owner. Just because the owner doesn't live in the home doesn't necessarily mean there's motivation. So you will get a large volume of people that will be on that list. But then majority of the phone calls will be, yeah, we own it. We're making $2,000 a month. What do you want to give us for it? right? There is no reason to sell. Um, or yeah, I live in California and I have the home in Virginia beach, but I have no interest in selling it. Um, the other one is, uh, pre foreclosure and that list didn't do well for us at all. Um, that was one where, you know, pre foreclosure mean where somebody is not paid their monthly. And now when this is being recorded today, this is being done in the year of COVID. Um, and it's it, maybe there's that piece coming, but let's just talk prior to that where somebody hadn't paid their mortgage in three months, they were 90 days behind. And that's what caused them to have a, you know, pre foreclosure status, right. Or notification of foreclosure coming. Every time we talked to one of those people, it was a, I want you to save me. I want to, I want to stay in my home. And that was not where we were able to make money because we needed them to move out of the home in order to buy it, rehab it, and then resell it. Or we needed them to move out to buy it, put a little bit of money into it, and then rent it back out. So it wasn't, it wasn't the availability of having them stay in the home. The other part of this was I hear people talking about, well, why don't you buy the home and then rent it back to them? Problem there is if they were already 90 days behind their mortgage, what makes it that they're going to pay you, right? So that was an issue. So that's why we focus more on building lists that are more targeted. And those lists are the ones that are a little bit harder to find, or it takes a little bit more work to go get, right? So this is the courthouse list that people talk about, but they don't get deep dive in the specifics of what it takes to go get it. Sorry, so John, um, today we're just talking about building lists. Building just lists. Building lists. Courthouses will be next time. Okay. So we're not going to jump too deep into it. Buying so, courthouses are next time. Okay. So building lists without the specific types of list, and then we'll do this on the next recording. Yeah. So, so buying list. Just buying. What, what is it? 
Just buying. Just buying list. Okay. So let's talk about the pros. The pros on that is that it's quick, easy, and accessible. You can get a little bit targeted and you get a large volume of leads. The cons is it's the same list as everyone else. It's pretty expensive. Um, and it's a large volume of leads that you have to end up getting through to actually get a lead. And I'm going to read some notes we have here. Um, buying a list is a super quick and accessible way to get started in wholesaling. There are lots of sites out there uh, that you can use to buy all sorts of lists. Once you find the one you like, they generally have tons of different filters you can use to figure out area, equity, size, and much more. So as far as this buying a list, again, this is you're getting back to, it's a, you can buy a big list, but are you set up to do it? Are you set up as a company to, and, and this depends on how you're marketing. Um, are you going to be a online marketer? Are you going to be a skip trace marketer where you're skip tracing and cold calling. And then how are you set up for that? Do you have a system or a CRM that you, you can put that data into? Do you have cold callers? I mean, we're talking thousands guys. We're talking anywhere you buy in these lists, they could be anywhere of north of 5,000 leads uh, up to 10,000. You know, we have some guys specifically that are buying 10 and 15,000 uh, leads at a time and then skip tracing them and then working on those for maybe three months at a time and then buying a new list. So thinking about how you want to do this marketing is how you're set up on the list that you're buying in order to figure out how you're going to manage it all, right? Can you send out 5,000, let's just say in a text blast, and then are you set up to answer those as they come back? Because if not, that was just a huge waste of money. Um, let's talk about marketing mail. If you, are you set up to the volume and cost it talks to, or it takes to send mail, right? Your average cost to send a letter. And this is another one we can talk about letter and postcards. We do not get a response rate off of postcards. Um, we are strictly letters and they work really well with a 4% response rate. But if you're doing this, are you able to afford the consistency that comes behind marketing? Are you able to send enough letters each week? in order to, to try to keep up with that volume, right? Having so many people call you, so many people follow up with you, um, or even call you at all. And then of course, what's the return um, on that? What's the return mail on that volume you send out? So all this goes back to buying the list. And are you set up to, I guess, even have the ability to manage those lists as far as cleaning up the data, right? Are you getting in and cleaning up you know, LLCs and dealing with trust and dealing with um, just not just homeowner properties. How, how are you set up for that? And that's where we, it just takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of uh, mining of that list. So, you know, when you first get into this and you're buying a list, you got to go through and clean it up. It takes time. How does, what does that look like? And I can tell you after you do that on your own for about maybe one or two, maybe four rounds, you're not going to want to do it anymore. Um, there's a lot of time that goes into it, right? And this is where you start for hiring virtual assistants to help you with that kind of stuff and building your business. Um, but buying a list usually does not, um, in the beginning, get you the low hanging fruit you need. Um, and this is where we end up into this, you know, is it worth buying a list because it's a simple of ease, but then what comes behind it? So quick little talk today, guys. Um, not too deep dive. <laughs> I thought we were going all the way through it, but this is where we're going to try to do this in a two part series for you guys. Um, but yeah, this is one of those things where you can buy a list, but are you set up to do it to take in the intake of calls? Are you set up to clean up that list? Um, what does that look like to be able to get the marketing out and then be able to absorb the inbound? And then what response rate do you have based on calls that came in versus marketing pieces that went out? I don't care what kind of marketing it was, whether it was text, mail, doesn't matter. Um, we're not big on the RVM world, so that's not something I can talk to you about, but we are texting and we are cold calling and we are mailing. So, and those do get us a really good response rate. So buying list, uh, if you're a bigger company, maybe that's something you can do 
to try to get some more volume in after you've gone to the other route. Uh, but this is one of those that, again, it goes back to the pros being it's quick, easy, and accessible. You can get targeted. Uh, maybe you're going for specific uh, zip codes. Maybe you can actually get honed into specific neighborhoods. There's a large volume of leads. Again, it goes back to the same problem. It's the same list everyone else is hitting. Uh, it can become pretty expensive by purchasing the list. And it's a very, very large volume of leads that are you set up to actually work those leads as they come in. So guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. A little quick lunchtime live talking about building list. And uh, next time we will get in here and deep dive a little bit about building list and what that looks like. So thanks again for hanging out, guys. As always, if you would, if you're interested in things that might help you with your wholesaling business um, to make it scalable and give you more direction, uh, go to wholesalingoutofthebox.com and uh, click around over there and see if you're local to any events um, here in Hampton Roads. Or maybe there's some things there that might help you um, understand the business a little bit more and may get more organized. Again, thank you so much for the time. And uh, hopefully you guys come back for the next one. And uh, please leave some comments for us. Let us know what you think on these things. I uh, would like to go back, see all the views you guys are viewing it. But I would love some feedback and see if this is information that's helping. So thanks again, guys. Uh, have a good day and we'll talk to you soon. Later.